What is going on? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. I seriously appreciate you tuning in today. We're back here in my 2006 Nissan 350Z rev up. And today, as you saw from the title of today's video, we're gonna be talking about three, count them, three power mods for both my 350Z rev up and my 350Z HR. We are gonna start with the rev up right now. We're gonna go for a little cruise. We're gonna talk about the three power mods I feel like are the most important things you need to start with when it comes to the rev up engine. These engines are absolutely amazing and they do get a lot of flack, but if you treat them right, they treat you right back as well. So let's go for a drive. The rev up has a special place in my heart. We're gonna talk about that and a few things that you could do to make this car even more fun to drive around every single day. So let's get into it. up we got apple car play in this thing such an awesome and comfortable car to drive we got the carbon interior door panels on both sides full carbon listen to this listen to this plus the center console is completely full carbon fiber which is amazing kind of hard to see with the angle of the sun right now but it's all reflective and glossy so so cool the interior mods in this car are just amazing every time i get into it i'm like oh this it feels like a sports car with the carbon and everything but this thing listen to this listen Amazing, just amazing. This car has the gentleman's exhaust or what's considered the gentleman's exhaust. Just a muffler delete, completely stock exhaust system with a muffler delete. And it does the job, you guys. It does the job. Uh, and I'm telling you, the 350Z has like its own sort of Nissan VTEC and anything above 4,000 RPM, it opens the variable valve timing, which was added in 2006 on the rev up engine, some 2005 models. And it just sounds great. It just adds like this gurgly sound that it, that is not there below 4,000 RPM. So super awesome, can't complain to be honest. But anyways, very first mod we're gonna be talking about when it comes to power mods for this car, it's gonna be a plenum spacer. What is a plenum spacer, you ask? Well, the top of the rev up motor, as you know, has one air intake, one throttle body. And what ends up happening to these cars or what happens from the factory is the plenum or the thing on top of the engine actually sits a little too low in the car. Also known as the intake manifold, it's kind of tapered downward towards the front and those front two cylinders or honestly the front four cylinders they don't get the best airflow and the plenum spacer is what's going to allow you to get that extra airflow that you need in this car there's said to be about a 10 to 15 horsepower upgrade from the plenum spacer you can't go wrong honestly and for sub 200 dollars or around 200 dollars it's just a great mod you can do it yourself in about an hour and a half definitely an amazing must-have option for power mods if you're looking to upgrade the you know the power or the horsepower on your rev up engine or also the de as well just the regular de not the de rev up also suffers for that same exact kind of narrowed or tapered intake manifold and the plenum spacer helps that car too so single 350z has had a cold air intake installed at you know at least some point in its life and they all have these random either no name cold air intakes or they have an ebay cold air intake or z1 motorsports which they're all cold they're all great cold air intakes but believe it or not believe it or not you could do all the research you want and i'm telling you you'll find the exact same thing i found when i was looking for a cold air intake and that is that the stock rev up air intake is the best one for this car one sec, one sec. oh seven thousand <laughs> oh my god. There 
are tests documented and done on dynos that show that the stock air intake provides basically the exact same horsepower numbers as an aftermarket one and as ironic as it sounds the best mod for your air intake is going to be a stock air intake and finding one of those i mean it's really hard and especially for the hr for some reason i just cannot find stock intakes for the hr and i know there's a lot of aftermarket companies out there right now watching this like come on man Come on, man. If you're looking for horsepower numbers and longevity of your car, the stock intake is gonna provide pretty much exactly the same horsepower numbers as an aftermarket one. I've looked at so many dyno sheets and it all basically concludes to about that exact same thing. So do you know, do you know how many intakes, stock intakes from these cars are sitting in people's garages and boxes right now? They don't even know they have them anymore. They sold their car 10 years ago and people like me and you, are searching the internet like madmen trying to find these stock air intakes and they don't even know where they're at. You can find aftermarket intakes all day long for these cars, but the OEM stock ones, it just seems to be impossible to be able to find a good one that doesn't have any leaks in it. That's just, that's literally just the fact of the matter is that the stock intake is gonna be one of the best intakes for this car. So the more you know, the more you know. All right, so before we get back and drive the HR around and do the exact same thing, talk about the best three performance mods for that car, we have one more on the list for the rev-up engine. And I know, as much as I love the sound of this rev-up, we could be getting more power out of it. And the way to do that is a full series, like a full, an actual full exhaust system. The catalytic converters, the resonator, you know, obviously the stock muffler, if you have it on there, are gonna be super restrictive for this car. The best option is gonna be a full exhaust system. Catback is fine but if you can find basically headers back from the engine all the way to the back, it's gonna be your best bet. Motordyne, amazing example. Tomei provides so many great options for resonated test pipes, also muffler as well. Same with Megan Racing. That's what we're running on the blue car and it sounds amazing, honestly. I would love to get some Megan Racing resonated test pipes just to see how the full exhaust system sounds. I don't like a super raspy exhaust and I can only imagine that a full exhaust will cause a lot of raspiness. There are exhausts and obviously the more you pay the better exact you know the better sound you're gonna get and probably the less rasp as well I feel like the Tomei is a little bit raspy let me know in the comments if you agree but there is some interesting sounding Tomei's out there and of course they're loud and they really stress that trumpety VQ sound that everyone knows and loves but it's just not really for me honestly and I know I'm gonna get some hate in the comments because the Tomei is where it's at, but personally, I love the Megan Racing exhaust that's on that car. And if we didn't have the Megan Racing exhaust, I probably would have done another muffler delete because I love the sound of the red car or this one we're in right now. And if it wasn't for those and I had an unlimited budget, Motordyne would be the exact exhaust I would go for. I love how the Motordyne exhaust sounds. I, if you've watched my last video, know I'm looking. I really, really want a GTR someday on the channel. And the Motordyne exhaust sounds closest to a GTR that you can basically get. But honestly, a full exhaust system is gonna provide, you know, the least restriction when it comes to airflow. And when it comes to horsepower gain, you really wanna get new air in and old air out as fast as possible. A full exhaust system that's less restrictive is gonna be your best bet when it comes to that. And obviously tuning the car so all of these things can kind of come together. You're looking at 15, 20, 25 horsepower increase, which is amazing, honestly. Like this car made about 271 horsepower on a Mustang dyno, which I was actually really impressed to see. So if it had a full real exhaust, like a true exhaust on it, and the stock air intakes, would we have made 280, 285? Who knows? But getting it tuned, obviously, without a tune, these things aren't gonna perform as well as they could, but with a tune, you really do get the best bang for your buck when it comes to all these mods. And I suggest tuning the car after, after you've done all these things, so. All right, guys, I'm gonna park the rev up right now. We're gonna jump in the HR. We're gonna do a lab just like we did in this car. We're gonna talk about the three best horsepower mods for the HR and just enjoy that car for what it is. I mean, honestly, both of these cars are just way too much fun to drive around. I, I seriously, can get, I get myself in trouble all the time. But luckily, I've been pretty good about tickets lately. I really hope I didn't just jinx it, but let's jump in that HR right now. Dang. <laughs> I often 
forget. <laughs> When I'm sitting at a red light, I just, I have free will to be able to just rev this car. And like, of course people look at me like I'm crazy or like I'm impatient, but I think if they were sitting in this thing too, they'd want to rev it. And the light is green, so now we go. <laughs> Jeez, we floor it and the light turns red. That's the universe for you universe for you. Anyways, three performance mods for your Nissan 350C HR. Let's start with number one is going to be Jesus. Number one is going to be high flow catalytic converters. So piggybacking kind of off of what we said with the rev up, the catalytic converters on the HR are also pretty restrictive. High flow cats are a great way to stay in smog compliance as well as free up some airflow in the exhaust system. So there are a bunch of great options. Burke Technology, Fast Intentions, Z1 Motorsports has great high flow cats, Megan Racing high flow catalytic converters. Basically every single exhaust company makes a good high flow catalytic converter for this car. I mean exhaust is basically the number one thing that you're going to want to do to these cars to kind of free up that restrictive airflow coming out the back. And you can't really go wrong with any of them. The one thing I will say, living in California, basically any type of high flow catalytic converter is going to be illegal unfortunately. So it's kind of out of the question for California. I don't have them. I have regular cats on this car and I wish and dream every day and imagine what it would be like to have high flow cats on this car because honestly even as it sits right now the thing just rips and I could not imagine with even more or better airflow than what it's got a few downshifts to third I mean it just it just keeps on pulling all the way to 7500 rpm and just, just insane. Our last mod is gonna help with that higher RPM pulling. And honestly, it already pulls amazing. So stay tuned, we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. But the second thing we're gonna talk about is an ECU tune. Kind of like what we were saying with the rev up. If you want all these mods to work, you're gonna wanna get your car tuned after you put them all on. Just because, you know, with higher airflow comes more fuel input. You can put more fuel when you have more air. And that's just how it works. Really to get all the difference, you're gonna wanna tune the car afterwards. And a lot, like like we were saying about California, like tuning your car can be illegal. They put sometimes like to put cars on dynos. I don't know if you saw my video about that, but they've been setting up these mobile dynos. If your car is tuned, they're gonna know. And it also kind of makes it hard to get a smog. But if you know a guy, you know, you know. But if you don't live in California, and your state allows car enthusiasts or enjoys car enthusiasts, ECU tune for sure. It's gonna get you the most horsepower. You'll be able to adjust valve timing. You'll be able to adjust throttle position, all these different things from your ECU being tuned. And you're gonna notice the most gain from an ECU tune probably. If you're in a state that doesn't really care like Texas or Florida, have at it, man. Honestly, do it for me because I can't. And I would love to. Like I said, ECU tune, definitely the way to go. You can add all the mods you want, but they're gonna work the best once you get your ECU tuned. And the very last mod we're gonna talk about when it comes to horsepower gains in your 350Z HR, this kind of goes with the rev up as well, but it's completely different than anything we've talked about. And that's gonna be a camshafts. If you can put performance cams in your car, it's a little expensive, I'm not gonna lie. You kinda have to take the whole motor apart. But if you got the time and you're doing it yourself, JWT, also known as Jim Wolf Technology, they make amazing cams for the 350Z HR and the rev up, or the DE, I mean. I mean. adjust when the cams open up and close. They pretty much just allow for more aggressive timing on the engine. It allows your engine to breathe a lot better 
internally. So of course you have intakes to increase breathability and you have the exhaust to you know re reduce re uh, you know restriction as the air is leaving the car. But internally, camshafts are gonna be the way to go. People have seen the highest performance gains from camshafts. Oh, you guys. There's a white Mustang over there. He's just floored it and I think we gotta chase him down. basically a fully built engine 350z it's hard to make more than 50 horsepower after you do all of this stuff and it's just because unless you turbo the car or supercharge it these engines honestly are pretty built from the factory 300 horsepower from the factory you just you gotta wonder what nissan was thinking when they released these things to the public like just an amazing car so so many modification opportunities when it comes to these things well anyways thank you guys so much for tuning in i hope you enjoyed today's video i hope you learned something i know we've just been rambling but honestly rambling is my favorite thing to do if you haven't if you haven't noticed that so i love learning things about these cars i love looking at dyno sheets to see what different things are providing what horsepower gains and these are things that i've learned just on my own if there's anything you know about that are providing just insane horsepower gains for these cars you know i've heard 50 60 horsepower on a fully built engine is basically what you can expect without going forced induction or like a turbo honestly though if you could make 340 at the wheel i can only imagine that's got to be seriously one of the highest horsepower z's out there that's not forced induction and honestly i would be so stoked with about 320 315 at the wheel and that would be pretty amazing without you know obviously turboing the car turboing the hr i'd want at least 500 no i'm not like i'm just i'm just saying but it's possible it's possible on a stock block too which is pretty insane the rev up in the de i would not go over 400 i feel like even that's kind of pushing it if you want some longevity in your rev up i would stick around 350 and honestly is it worth turboing your car for an extra 50 60 horsepower maybe Maybe. If you're doing it yourself and you can get it done for like less than two G's, you know, and then tune three G's, like probably worth it, probably worth it. But you know, just my opinion. Anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Drop a comment down below if you learned, learned something or you got, like I said, you got any ideas for your mods that you want to do that are going to provide insane horsepower gains. Let me know. Let us know. Everyone here watching this video. Thank you once again so much for tuning in. Hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.